So the opportunity is there because it's just, you know, 24 seven news cycles and media cycles always happening, um, but just mostly people don't know how to access it. Welcome to Game Changer, where you get the inside track to win in a decade of disruption. So go ahead and subscribe and let's crush this business unusual game together. Our guest today is Jackie Jordan. She's the CEO of TV Guestpert, two-time Emmy-nominated TV producer and New York Times bestselling publisher, as well as three-time author. Celebrity guests produced by Jackie include Steven Spielberg, Charlie Theron, Clint Eastwood, Angelina Jolie, Peter Jackson, George Clooney, and Dustin Hoffman. Through her company, TV Guestbert, Jackie raises the profile of her guests, of her clients, or as she refers to them, guestperts, in the media to dramatically grow their business. Jackie, such an honor to have you on the show. Huge welcome. Thank you so much, Carmen. So happy to be here. Yay. Yeah, that's quite a celebrity list, isn't it? That makes me a really good um, conversationalist at a cocktail party. That's, you know, seeing that you started there, tell us something surprising about working with such celebrities. Well, you know, there was, I had tracked, uh, you know, when I look back at the way I like to storytell it is that I got to produce Harvey Weinstein, Kevin Spacey, Brett Ratner, Jeremy Piven, uh, some of the, 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 the gentlemen who were taken down during the Me Too movement. So, and it was the last show that I was a, a showrunner for, for another company before I had my own company. So I mm-hmm. left there to start my own company and um, and I didn't leave because I uh, had produced some of those people. It was, I left because I had, I had hit a glass ceiling and I was mm. aware that I wasn't going to go any further and that owning own my own business was going to be the, um, the right thing for me. And ironically, I bought a house at the same time I started my business. Of course, my biggest fear ever in my life was, you know, I'm going to buy a house and then lose my job, which is exactly what happened. But I made every mortgage payment of that home over the 16 years from my business, from income I earned from my business. So, um, yeah, so I mean, I got pushed, I got shoved, I made a jump and it turned into a leap. And uh, here I am today. Best thing that ever. Sometimes you think there's worst things that have ever happened to you and they turn out to be the best things that ever happened to you. And some, and flip side, sometimes you think the best things that happened to you are not, <laughs> not in your best interest in the long run. So yeah. that and, and what an interesting way you've put that because some people would think that, well, that sounds dreamy to work with all these people. Why would yeah. they ever want to leave that? Yet look what you've created and we're going to go yeah. into what you've created. I mean, it's, 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 it's fabulous to make that leap, push of and leap into something else. And now you're creating celebrities um, yeah. through, through your work, but in a completely different way. And, and it's almost the accidental celebrity, which is yeah, exactly incredible. Um, before we start talking about that, I would love to know with such a string of accomplishments, Jackie, um, and you, you've got such beautiful diversity in your life as well. You're not just about TV. You, 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 you've got so many different things in your life which you can tell us about. What's the secret to your success? What do, what do you think it is? Well, you know, I think I was an, I'm definitely an, a recovering overachiever. <laughs> and I, 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 you know, I bought into very young, like, you know, go, we can live our dreams. We can blah, blah, blah. You know, I put off having kids, which I never ended up having, you know, relationship, you know, so I bought into that as that was going to be the, was the ticket women could do anything. And it's not that we can't do anything. It's, you know, it, but it, I never tapped into like, what does Jackie want? Mm-hmm. So I kind of went running into life and into the world probably more out of like a survival mode, a uh, need to achieve rather than understanding anything other than that. Um, you know, so I took to, I took to a little midwife to kind of look in the rear view mirror and be like, huh, that's interesting. So I'm a recovering overachiever is it. And then now I just try to have a passionate, well-balanced life and be of service and contribution to other people. 
um, is more what that looks like. Mm. And um, yeah, so I've kind of, I've left a lot of that, like need to prove, need to mm. have a big title and all of that other stuff. I mean, I remember having an office that overlooked Times Square while I was running a show. And I remember having a, an office that overlooked the Hollywood sign, you know, and, and, and they were monumental moments that were important to me, but, you know, I felt that those moments needed to be important to other people. Mm-hmm. And when it, when you have moments and you think they need to be important to other people, you're definitely doing, you're performing for the wrong audience. And, um, you know, so I just, you know, I had to grow through that. I had to I live through that. And, um, and idea yeah, now I'm, I'm much more, much more passionate. Um, I've, you know, I've got a, a diversity of activities in my life that like actually do not make sense in a <laughs> together you know I'm been playing pickleball which I never even heard of <clears throat> six yeah, months what, ago what is that <laughs> yeah pickleball right it's a it's a smaller game than tennis but a bigger game than ping pong so it's not as hard to play you don't have to be as athletic as uh as tennis and uh, however it's and you play with like a wiffle ball super, super fun. I, I only heard about it recently mm-hmm. and my, actually my dog died and I was invited to play pickleball a couple of days later. And I was like, Oh my God, I don't want to go meet new girls. I, my heart was so sad. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Oh, I don't even know what to wear. And I don't, I don't know how to play the game. And I was like, Oh, please don't make me go play with new people. I don't want to go <laughs> What if I don't have the right thing to wear and I make a fool of myself, you know, but, but I was like so bereft from my dog dying that Aww. like I had no resistance you know, so I didn't blow it off. I showed up and then, um, it was, it was just, it's been so much fun. So that's, you know, this, this hobby that I play and I've gotten to know this just fabulous, fabulous diversity of people of all ages, because you don't have to be like some super athletic pro to play pickleball. Um, it's really <laughs> quite right. And then I've I volunteered to help this woman, um, be her stable girl just to, uh, you know, so I'm picking up poop. Um, with a shovel a couple mornings a week, but I'm outside super early and I'm taking care of this gorgeous Arabian horse and a miniature donkey just to get some fresh air. And, and, you know, I work out in the gym. There's like only so many times you can throw kettlebells around, you know, so (laughs) piles of poop around with shovels and I'm probably getting just as good a workout, if not better. And I'm, you know, I'm outside and I'm, you know, it's create, you know, it's just, it's great just to be in nature. Like, we all say we want to do it, but I, you know, how often do we do it? We spend a lot of time behind our computers and I'm like, if I'm going to be behind my computer, I can be in anywhere in the world. Um, so just, just kind of, you know, shaping it up and you know, have other interests, you know, I've been doing real estate and remodeling in between, you know, remodeling properties um, while I run my primary business. And then our company, we just got a TEDx uh, Franklin and not the company, but I got the TEDx Franklin like license to uh, produce the TEDx. Of, uh, oh, community of fantastic. Events. So, yeah, you know, just kind of keep us very, 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 you know, like diverse, you know, uh, because I, I, I've, I've had burnout. So to answer the question about earlier is, you know, when we were younger, I did, all, I ran after the whole achievement thing. And then I hit burnout by like 32 years old. I was like burnt out, like, you know, couldn't move, you know, then they said you're depressed and you got chronic fatigue syndrome and you've got all this. And I just, you know, I just think I was misaligned with um, my, with what we, with my true value, and what mm. made me what made me tick. I was so busy just, you know, hitting the checklist of externalized achievements. And um, yeah, so I had, you know, I've had a lot of lessons very early on, but I love what I do. You know, my TV guest for, I love, you know, that we get to help people build out their media development businesses. Um, You know, it's something that I'm really passionate about. We're all watching and witnessing the narrative and we're all almost, you know, been held hostage by a narrative that some of us yeah. agree with or disagree with, but I think at, at some level, all of us don't really like what's happening. And mm. I always say that, uh, especially two groups that I speak to, you know, as I th- think all humans want the same thing. We all want the same thing. We want to be safe. We want to be healthy. We want to have opportunity. We want our family to flourish. We want our community to flourish. I don't think anybody disagrees with that. Nothing. I think where we get that. right. Mm. I think every universally, we just want that, you know, we want clean water, you know, like, I just think it's very, very basic. We're not complicated people. What happens is we get, we get caught up in fighting over who we think should be giving it to us. Mm. I think the very premise of thinking that someone should be giving it to us is also problematic in the bigger picture of things. But I do think we all want the same thing, which really makes us a lot more alike than it makes us different. 
So what I do with my business with TV Guestbert, when I work with my experts, is that I try to listen to what their value is and how their their business are, would grow and and have them participate in the narrative in a more positive in a positive way um, that isn't quite, you know, the agenda that's being fed to us. Mm-hmm. This is a and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tricky little dance, you know, and especially now with cancel culture, you know, people who are probably more intimidated to speak out um, and be participated in the media in ways mm-hmm. that, you know, because your livelihood and your business and your reputation are determined by it. Um, God, goodness gracious, you say the wrong thing or put up yeah. the wrong meme and uh, your business is threatened because you're perceived not being part of something or participating in something. So it's, uh, but I've been at this for a long time. So I've been, I feel very uh, confident in navigating my clients through this in order to uh, help them, you know, achieve, you know, what they want and what they deserve and, you know, and participating in messaging that other people should should know about. Mm. If you can, just so for our audience who, who don't really know exactly what it is that you do. So give us a little bit of a description of what guest uh, put, um, it, sorry, TV guest put is and the kind of clients that, that you would work with, what you do for them. And then maybe throw in a, a, a success story that would really give us a, a picture of, of this transformation that you create for people. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, we've been working a long time with long time with uh, Dr. Guyane De Silva, and she's a psychiatrist in uh, Southern California, and she's been with us for a long time. And that's a compliment. You know, it's not like she's been with us a long time because she's, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's great client retention. But she's um, she's published two books under our a publishing company. We're a New York Times bestselling publisher. Uh, the first one was uh, help your to help the, the psychiatrist guide to helping your depressed tween because tweens are 11 to 14 years old are hitting a high depression rate. I think mm-hmm. a lot of that comes in with the uh, influence of social media in young people's lives. Mm-hmm. But she talks about that that uh, group not really being recognized for 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 depression and what they're, what they're feeling. And the second big we, book we did was equally as important, which was a psychiatrist guide, uh, uh, stop your child, uh, your teen, your teen's addiction before it starts, which is another really important book. And she's somebody that, you know, literally has, you know, gone through all of our media training programs and, you know, is, is a well sought after now paid public speaker, as well as a national, uh, go-to expert on psychiatry for teenagers and tweens. Uh, that's that the you know we didn't build that we didn't build that um, kingdom for her overnight. Um, it's taken years, but it's extraordinary mm. to be at where she receives now media requests as a, as mm. opposed to pursuing the media requests. So we you know like you said, as you were generous enough to say at the very beginning we we were able to um, you know create celebrities and mm. um, and she's. She's one of them, and she's appeared on all sorts of national um, and even international shows, uh, commenting on the mental health of you know teens and tweens, and also really helping parents, uh, really helping parents um, raise their teens in a healthy yeah. way. Yeah, you know, sure. if you know, we can, we, we can try and want to fix our teens and our tweens, but if we don't, if we don't help our parents' parents. It doesn't matter. Mm. It does. Um, so that's the publishing side of, of, of what you do. Tell us a little bit about the TV side as well and, and, and helping your, peop- uh, your, your clients get onto TV because, you know, we all know we need more exposure in our businesses. But the first thing we think of, especially if you're a small to medium sized business, is we think about social media, we think about podcasts, we think about summits. How many people think about being on TV? I mean, it, it's, it's an entire um, avenue for us. Give us a, a little bit about that. So there's so much opportunity in television. It's an animal that never 
never fully satisfied. There's opportunity <laughs> all the time. I, as I mean, as a former television producer, I could tell you, I mean, we're always booking people. We're always looking for great guests, great experts, good talkers, people with information. So the opportunity is there because it's just, you know, 24 seven news cycles and media cycles always happening. Um, but just mostly people don't know how to access it. So when I wrote my mm-hmm. first book, Get on TV, p- How to Pitch the Producers and Promoting Yourselves, I was really saying to experts, like, here's just the guide, which is our really our business model. But here's the guide to getting yourself on television because producers are always looking for you. It's it's a lot easier for producers now to find uh, experts because of, because of social media and websites. When I was a TV producer back at Montel, Maury Povich, Wall Street Journal TV, CNBC, Maury Povich, like we, we used a phone book and there, you know, we didn't even have a cell phone. So just, you know, just don't laugh or you know, get me started. But we were, we were had to be hunters in order to get stories going. Um, so it's a much easier now, but you know, it's, it's about getting your message out, out there. And, you know, TV creates credibility when you're on television. Um, you create credibility. People recognize that it's a credible, credible force, even in this like, you know, dubious uh, changing Uh, arena right now um people really uh recognize that so yes so if if someone hasn't thought about it so so they want to they they're looking at growing their business they're looking at exposure they they look at all these other things but they haven't considered tv what would be your advice to them is to try it because I mean it seems daunting I think it seems daunting for most people it's like oh my god what do I do I mean there's this Dinkum lights camera action on me. What if I make a boo boo or say the worst yeah, flipping thing on you know? There's millions yeah. watching me. I can't retract it. Are there businesses that absolutely should um, think about it, and maybe other businesses or a phase of your business where you'd say, you know what, put that on the back burner. It's not for you. Do you have the those groups where you'd go? you absolutely should be what's the criteria there and you should just just hang off a little bit sure well timing is timing has a lot to do with it I I really believe it benefits all businesses you know and I'm also start local you know think global Um, but it does benefit all businesses but timing is everything and so content so we had this doctor from San Francisco and he was an infectious disease doctor and he, 2018, he's like, I think I'm going to come on board. I think I'm going to come on board. Oh, well, I'm going to get married. I'll come on board after I get married. Oh, I had my wedding. Well, we're buying a house. I think I'm going to come on board, blah, blah. And this went on into COVID. I was like, dude, you missed the train. Yeah. I'll catch you on the other side. Infectious disease doctor. <laughs> so, you know, timing has a lot to do with it. Um, we had a fracking client you know, fracking is not a real big common com- conversation. It might cycle back around because gas prices like gas, uh, natural gas prices are going up right now, uh, which is going to affect heat for the winter. So like, so news has a cycle. So like paying attention, but when you see it on TV, it's already in the past. Yeah. So our job and why, you know, we're worthy being paid is we are, we have our sixth sense to know like what's about to hit mm. uh, a really good, um, one for us as well is we had uh, Dr. Larry Burchette. He's an emergency room doctor, worked with us. Very, very handsome guy. And he was on uh, The Bachelor. He was like, a, he was a bachelor and he, he didn't get picked. Uh, and however, we knew that Mac, I, I knew instinctively the whole conversation of toxic masculinity was going to come out because we had just hit the Me Too mm-hmm. movement. So it's all about the Me Too movement. Well, what's the cause of Me Too movement? Oh, well, it's going to be toxic masculinity. Mm-hmm. So we started putting him out there as long as well as another um, author of ours in the conversation of toxic masculinity and boom, 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 it hit. And now it's a zeitgeist word. You know, I don't take credit for it, but I do. I mean, that's what I get paid for is that sixth sense of knowing this is the content stream that's coming down the road. Let's get you ready. People get so perfectionistic about the process. Like, oh, I need to have the website ready. I need to have my book out. Like I need to have this. Da, 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 da. Um, and sometimes it doesn't work that way. Like, it's like, if you feel the instinct, you got the impulse, it probably is mean it's going to happen yes. uh, because once the train leaves the station, it is just a, so much more work to, mm-hmm. to get it. We want to do it when there's momentum, not when the train is left and you're like ch- running down the train tracks, trying to catch it. Not as fun. So, so timing so is everything. Yeah, so that's such an important role you're playing. You're not only 
um, helping people look their best, speak their best, get the narrative right and preparing them to be on, on camera. But you're also timing it, helping them for your expertise or can, can so you're helping them tweak the messages and the timing as well. So you're playing an incredible role. I always role. say it's about content. So experts are disposable. I can find 1,500 emergency room doctors. The content is not. So what, what you have to say as an expert, the uniqueness of your point of view is what the value is. So the currency that my company exchanges with the media is content. I then provide a well-trained pretty face to deliver it to the media. But ultimately, so we might, so that's why I call us a media development company and not a PR company, because a PR company will kind of handhold you just to get you the booking and then send you out the door. It's like they throw a party. I call them the one night stand. You have a really <laughs> great time. It felt really good. But like, what, what, what'd you get out of it the next day? My clients, I kind of, my guest spurts, I kind of push a little harder than that. I, I get, I get the content from them up front. I ask them to partic participate in, you know, give me their speaking points, feed us the content, feed us the content. Uh, they're like, but it's also the, the thinking for me behind it is, is also prepares them for the delivery of the, of the, um, of, of the media appearance because they're becoming versed and conscious of what they would say, the cadence of what they would say by doing it. So that's it's serving a couple purposes. But I'm, what I'm doing is taking it to the producer and letting the producer know this is this is the value of what this client would say. This is what the value of this guestbert says that would be unique. And then we negotiate content with the producer. I negotiate back and forth that speaking points. That's the currency I deal with is content. And then I reflect it back to my client. So this is how your interview is going to go based on this. And it becomes an unspoken agreement between the show and the expert. And that's how we avoid those gotcha moments. Okay. Gotcha interviews. Because I've pre-negotiated what the content is. I've said to the producer, this is what this client can say. This is what this client's going to deliver. Producer's like, yeah, I like it. I would like a little bit more of this, you know, a little less of this. I say to my client, can you do it that way? Client says, yes. Okay. Now we've got an agreement. Mm, so that's beautiful. That's, yes. And I spell it out in the, in our first book, get on TV because, and I also talk about it in the ultimate on-camera guidebook, but, but I do it because like, that's the architecture I'm considered mm. an unscripted reality television producer. I've never produced a show where I didn't write a script for. So everything is scripted. So I know what the, I actually know what I need my expert to say before I've even booked my expert. I've written it into my show program. So I'm just finding the right person who's going to say it. And that's how all media works. So I'm funneling my clients into those opportunities, but I'm negotiating with the producer content. I'm sometimes saying to a producer, Hey, you might not have thought of it this way. You might not have, you know, or what if we took it from this point of view and, you know, producers aren't ex experts on everything, you know, they're, they're flipping content fast. So if I'm, if I come to a producer as a content provider to them and make their job easier than just giving them a person, I'm giving them the segment, I'm giving them the show, mm -hmm. I'm giving them the answer, I'm making their show easier. So that's kind of the dynamic that we play in. And, I, and I've got a really good success about it. My team is really... Um, well, well, you know, they've got their sniffer on and it's just kind of how we operate. I have a guest for, we're building out her media business and she's into very multi-level marketing, essentially, you know, she runs a lot of different multi-level marketing products. So we do things like, you know, how do, how do we keep your, your house a free, uh, toxic free? You know, and then she can bring in the products that she uses for business shows. We do, we talk about the viability of multi-level marketing, which used to be such a look, look down upon like, Oh, you yeah. Amway people, you know, <laughs> you know, so we find different ways and different angles to introduce her to diff different audiences to help build out that side of her, her business. Every one of my clients business needs are different, but the overall cookie cutter of what we do is there is very much the same. Mm -hmm. And I really, I love it. Like, that's just, that's just my, I mean, I'm in my lane when I do that work. Totally such a, such a creative role. So, so what I'm hearing you saying is that there's two angles to what you do. Um, if, if I've heard correctly, one way you identify an amazing angle, um, a piece that, that would fit whatever producers are, are needing and 
you potentially find the right person that has that content and then work together. Um, and then the other side where people come to you to, to work, to help them um, bring their message and you help it. So do you do both those? Angles? I don't get paid by the media at all. Okay. I don't get yes. I, I Literally I'm just providing a quality service for free. So only my clients pay me only my guests. Yeah. And it keeps, it keeps the integrity, it keeps my, mm. it keeps the integrity super clean. I'm just serving my client's best interests, but this is what I have for you. That would work for your program. Would okay. you like it? Yeah. So that's how that works. But I only, I only receive uh, the income from my, my clients and um, but, but I provide a quality free service that makes a producer's job easier or a journalist's totally, job, easier. Totally. you know, and you know, we've got, we've got the bios and the headshots and the videotape and the speaking points. And, you know, we can write the segment up and we can find supplementary guests. We just did it for um, in fact, we have a webinar tomorrow that anybody's welcome to come from one of our doctors talking about advocating for your own health. It's for our group, but we just did a local news piece with her at her office. She does, um, uh, fine needle aspiration biopsies. So she's the, she's the lab and the doctor all at once. So if you have a lump in your breast right there, she's going to check it out and tell you what it is, why you don't have to wait for some lab and mm -hmm. some guy in a dark room to figure it out two weeks later. So she'll tell you right there. And that's what she does. So I, we, I said, look, can we get a patient that will let us go on camera and you just literally show us what you do, you know? So I pitched that, you know, they, people love that show and mm, tell, yeah. show and tell medicine. And what she does is unique. And so we got, you know, uh, we got uh, the patient and I pitched it and I said, we got a patient, here's the doctor. We'll do a story, a little background story and you send your cruise in. So that's, you know, that's what we do. Um, sure. Yeah. Fascinating. We trouble. Yeah, yeah, it is. But it's also fascinating to show that like as, as much of an agenda as the media is at this point in time, it shows us also that, you know, we can participate in the beast mm -hmm. <laughs> and create opportunity and still be a value of end of service. And, you know, it's kind of like how I have to feel about my whole entire life right now, given how strange the, it is these days. Yeah, but what's what's nice, what's what's wonderful, Jackie, and, and the value that you bring in is you understand this beast. You, you, mm -hmm. you understand it, you know how it operates. So bringing someone into it, you, you can, you can massage it in a way that, you know, you, you keeping everybody happy, you, you within and now with sort of within the narrative and also not part of that narrative. And yeah. <laughs> so it's a game. It, it, it's a, it's a game. And, and um, we need people like you to, to help us navigate these. Why would you want to try and get onto TV, like you say, particularly when it's quite a beast at the moment and you don't know what the narratives are, why would you want to navigate that space on your own when you can, can really be set up for success with someone who understands all angles and sides of it? So, you know, Facebook went down this past week. Yes, what a thing. A <laughs> Still a mystery. Yeah. Um, I, I would have thought it might have, I mean, knowing that Zuckerberg sold some shares last week is, makes it a very dubious, dubious move. Yes. But yes, yeah, so Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, which are all Facebook platforms, mm -hmm. went down. They have servers all over the world. They have backup servers. Hmm. The thing for me and what we also do is not to be dependent upon one outlet. Yeah. So I'm in diversity of content, but I'm also a diversity of business. So any client that I work with, because I'm very interested in growing their business, because if I'm growing your business as a result of our service, you're going to keep us, you're not getting rid of us, you know, <laughs> for sure. Quite, you know, it's why we have, you know, seven, eight, nine year, 10 year retention rate with, with some really good quality clients. So the, if, if you are a, one of those Facebook, Instagram life coaches, you got to really see that your financial dependency on that oh, platform massive. is very yeah. not smart, no. you know, and it's not smart. And I'm, I've been even, we've been very careful uh, just as a growing our company, not to be dependent just even on the internet, mm. you know, like, can, you know, can we run a business if we still have to pick up the phone and call people? Yeah. Can we run a business if it's just relationship to relationship, the old fashioned way? And so the diversity of assets, even content mm -hmm. assets is really important. I pay attention to that, you know, you, and um, 
and, and not having all of our, you know, our eggs and or collateral in one place mm. for any business. And, you know, I've, you know, I've been watching that. I've just been aware of it for our own business and for my clients. But, you know, yesterday was a really good moment because there are a lot of businesses that are completely dependent upon the Facebook business. Totally. And you have you know, brought the Amazon up. business. Totally. You brought up such a critical point and thank you for bringing that up because I mean, when, I don't know how many hours it was down. Um, but when I, I even say to my, my business partner, imagine the people who are running ads, maybe they had a crucial something happening the next day and they were running ads or they had live events or streaming or these, you know, these challenges that have become quite a craze now, whatever it is, what they were running and it's just absolutely gone. So it really, I think millions of people probably started thinking, wow, what do we do? And I love what you're saying as well. What about just the traditional way of things? Have we gone so completely digital that we've actually almost maybe missing opportunities to do business some of the traditional way? Carmen, don't you sometimes think like this digital, this digital perception of ease of life is way more complicated I, I mean, Absolutely. just on a personal <laughs> business level, I spent all day Sunday, I went through my bank statements, matching up my record, styling my, you know, my checkbook. And then it was like, this one overcharged me. This one didn't send mm-hmm. this one. I didn't get the shipping. Oh, the return credit for the refund. Now I got to log on to the portal. Oh, they changed the portal on oh, my web. Now my website is like, I, my, my, I have to reset the password or let me go to where I keep my passwords and I got to reset <laughs> it. Oh, I got to go figure out the $40. Then I have to send customer service a letter. I've got to get the invoice. Let me check, pull up the in like, like, I was like, what in this is easy? <laughs> exactly. exactly. Who, who, who's making this easy? And I know I'm not alone in that. Like, I know that this is a universal complaint. Like customer service right now is, is like rock bottom in terms of uh, business and good God forbid you have a reoccurring payment on something because lassoing that back is like practically impossible these days. And that's like a minor gripe, but I know it's a universal, like it doesn't make life easier, you know, and, you know, narrative wise, we're seeing that they're threatening the supply chain. We know that there's ships stuck in the port, you know, um, narrative, they're saying shop for Christmas early, shop for Christmas early. Hmm. But again, you know, as a, as a community, we need to pay attention to what are our local resources? Who are our local resources? How do we support our local resources? Because if we're dependent upon just the big, big, you know, stores, the Costco's, the Walmarts, you know, we may we, we may, may be in for a difficult time. So it's, it's, it's just this, this, this reliancy of, on mm-hmm. one thing is showing up in a lot of places in our life. And I'm just use that as an example. Um, but I certainly with, with the business that I run and paying attention to how my clients do it, you know, we don't, let's not, let's not keep our income just in one place coming from one, one place. I totally agree with you. So m- maybe along those lines then, from where you can see things and especially around this narrative and you, you get a feel and a sense of where things are going and what's actually not even being said by the narrative uh, because there's, we can read between the lines too. What would you say is one of the most, one of the scariest and one of the most exciting disruptions coming that you anticipate? Oh, that's a great question. That's a great question. Uh, I, I believe it's going to be the power to the people. I yeah. do believe that. I, um, I am convinced that all that is hidden is going to be revealed. Yes. I, I really, yeah. And yeah. Um, we're, we're watching it happen. Um, I've been yeah. saying, I have a YouTube video where I said it at the top of 2020. Said it at the, the top of 2020. You know, I said all the king's men, all the king's heads are going to fall, <laughs> and we're going to we're watching all that is hidden. Um, all the secrets are being it's all being flushed out, and I, I think that's why it looks so ridiculous because you know we've been there's been so many untruths. Yeah. Media is a big part of this. You know, like I am definitely sitting in the epicenter of. You know, I 
without wanting to, to swear, but the shit show of it all, mm-hmm. um, you know, and that's why like, that's why it's like ping pong. It's like every day it's, it's this, it's that it's, it's this. And uh, if, if you're paying attention, if you're actually paying attention to it and it, that needs to be flushed out, like uh, it's, it's, uh, it's like the dark night of the soul of the collective right now. And I think that um, that is the biggest disruptor, which I think is going to be bring a lot more autonomy, sovereignty and realignment and within community. Uh, which is well needed. Um, and um, so, I, I mean, I, I kind of look forward to it, even if the ride is, is, yeah. is bumpy, it's you know, absolutely. I think, you mm-hmm. know, I think we want the, uh, we want the outcome, you know, we, and going back to, we all want safety. We want health yes. for our family, yes. we want our opportunity, you know, if, if we stop fighting over who's supposed to give it to us and we come together and give it to each other, we change the whole paradigm. Totally I mean, some of the things that are people are battling about, I'm like, you know, you know, pull, you know, back out, you know, back out of the system, stop paying for it. You know, like, don't be abused by a system that's abusing you. So we want to, we want to trust media, you know, we want to be able to trust media and we're doubting what we're hearing. I so, can't tell you from an in, being an insider, what I, what, what is allowed to happen today when I was a was a puppy in the early '90s, we were never allowed to do what is put on the air now. I mean, I would have to show up with three sources. I would have to, you know, cro- I mean, the way that you can throw something out there, like I'm, I we see it every day. You throw something out there. First off, we've even conf- confused opinion with journalism. Opinion is not journalism. Journalism mm-hmm. is actually the reporting yes. of information. Yeah. And I, I don't even like the, using the word truth or facts anymore because those are manipulated words. Mm-hmm. People are, you know, contextually manipulating facts to, to, to their truth, mm-hmm. not the truth, but their truth. Still, it's truth, but it's not the truth. So we're watching all of this distortion in the media, of course, I, I think everybody needs to question everything they see. And I ask people that all the time when we get into those polarity conversations that many of us are experiencing. You know, I I don't engage directly with the polarity, but I will say to the person, I was like, wow, I'm really curious. It seems that you and I have very different information. Is mm-hmm. it possibly that possible that we're getting information from different places? Are you, are you interested in where I receive my information and looking at my information? I still usually get shut down, but the conversation will also stop as opposed mm-hmm. to getting into that headlocking. I'm right. Yeah. You're right. You know, and regurgitating all what I call imprints. They're just imprints of what they've, people have heard, what mm-hmm. people have heard. You know, I also say to people all the time, do you know that to be true? <laughs> and, you know, which is what I also do. know. <laughs> You know that to be true. I mean, it's different when you know it to be true because it happened to a friend. Yes. You know it to be true because it happened to you. You know Mm. it to be true because you saw it. But to know it to be true because you heard about it through somebody else or through the media or through something else does not necessarily make it true. Totally. And I I keep, I I am very, you know, and I, I, like I said, it's a very volatile polarizing time. You know, people are really quick to anger and like fist fighting over what I believe are truths that they think are true only because they were imprinted by it, Mm. not because it's really true. And so I constantly ask that question. Do you actually know that to be true? Or when I'm questioned, I said, well, I can, what I will say with I'm questioned, I say, well, in my reality, this is what I'm experiencing. Or I will say to them, that's not been my reality. What I can tell you from my direct experience is X, Y, Z. Wow. If we had more people with this kind of insight and broader view or choice to see the, the broadness or the duality of things and understand it, we would, we would have better media representation. Um, that would allow us then as, as, as viewers or, um, you know, the audiences to be able to then at least in, in, in um, neutrality make up our own de- decisions as to what's going on. Um, and, but at least and, feed and us I'm, with neutrality or, 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 or like you say, pure journalism. That's what we want is the pure journalism. I just did a speech 
And I, it's, I the speech is called mm-hmm. why I love hate speech. <laughs> hate speech is so important. I was like, do not censor what other people say. Exactly. I, I need to see and yes. understand, even if it's an enemy, I need to see it in few, full view. Yeah. Let yeah. me understand my enemy. Let me see how my witness, how my enemy thinks. Don't, don't edit, you know, don't, don't censor for me. You don't, the, you why are we editing it. stuff? Yeah, exactly. Why are we censoring stuff? Um, it, it's, it's, that's not sovereign. That's not free society. That's not democracy. And um, sure. So yeah. you're saying because people are going to be offended. Nobody's responsible for anybody else's feeling. Exactly. You know, I'm not, not here to defend, hurt, make sure someone's not offended or offended. But I do want to understand, you know, mm-hmm. and if there's a sect of society that feels very different than the way I have, or there's a very different worldview that I have, I want to know who they are. Totally, I want to know, I want to, I want to witness them, even if I don't understand them. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm, this is, this is like, not something that I am for at all. The, um, you know, personally, I, I've had to work my whole life to just gain my own sense of self-expression, mm-hmm. you know, and now I'm going to be shut down. I have an advocacy of pro- promoting and supporting people and their businesses and their expression. So, yeah, this is not something that I'm so pleased about. Sounds to me like you potentially have a new avenue in your business that could be formed to, to support people in just well, we are looking even more than we, we ever are have looking done before. To launch launch uh, uh, media memberships for not truth or not fact, but for integrity. Oh. Um, and we'd like to, we would like to log in on the blockchain. You know, just acts of you know, vocal expression in that is in integrity. Mm-hmm. Um, if we if we can't hear and discern truth and not truth, we do recognize integrity when we see it, and it's usually based on action. Yeah, I love it. So, I love it. That's that's so needed, so absolutely needed, and we need people like you with all this different um, experience and 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 the, the the willingness to to allow diversity to encourage diversity for us to have richness in 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 hearing these different viewpoints that's well, what the, grows yeah, us what diversity would be. I mean, diversity needs to be some level of accepting and and tolerating mm-hmm. people that are different you know yeah. so it's uh, it's it, so we're we're saying that we want diversity but we're going to shut people up we don't agree with <laughs> okay <laughs> that's rational that totally that makes sense. Sense. Jackie, this has been, you know, I'm just sitting listening to you. This has probably been a really tough journey for you over this last 18 months, being embroiled right in this crazy. I mean, it, it is, but I see, I see what's going on. So it's not, I see beyond the trickery. I've been seeing beyond the trickery for years, Mm. you know, having been a showrunner where I produce guests like Harvey Weinstein, Brett Ratner, (laughs) Kevin Spacey, you know, I've like, I've been, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've seen the trickery. I understand the trickery. I can, I know the chess players, like I understand how the chess play. So I'm not, so it doesn't. It just, it needs to happen. What I, I get more frustrated is sometimes I feel like I'm trapped in a mm. movie that mm. I have to watch play out that I, I already know the storyline and the plot and the players. And I'm like, oh my God, do I have to really listen? No, I have to <laughs> this. So I get, that's where I get more frustrated. Okay. It's like, oh my God, are we really living through this? Or like, is this the next level? Like, oh, we're going to play this game now. I mean, and I knew that from the time the lights went out mm. in the movie theater. So that's more of my frustration, but it's the trickery is very, 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 very clear. And it's very sinister. It's extraordinarily sinister yeah. at what is the, the dynamic that is playing. And, and, and I believe in my, in my, my soul that he, all humans are really good. Mm. You know, people are really good. We want the, you know, we we want right for each other. Yeah, and so to see the sinister and the trickery play out and people, well-intended people, I mean, the people who are being tricked right now are still really good people. They just, they just don't know that they're in the trick. And that is, that's that. the key. That's the key. Cause on both sides, the, the tricksters sometimes don't necessarily know they are set up as tricksters and the people being tricked don't necessarily have the 
eyes yet to see that they've been tricked because we get mesmerized and hypnotized by TV. We think everything that comes off freaking TV or it's media true. or the news. And we, and we don't, we, we don't want, we don't, we don't want other people to hurt. We don't want anybody yeah. to be suffered. We don't know we're being lured, yes. lured because of our great compassion yeah. into the trick and to playing out the trick and thereby becoming the trickster. Because we just want, we don't want people to hurt. We don't want people to suffer. We're, Mm -hmm. we're so compassionate that, you know, and, but in it's the manipulation of good people's compassion that they get lured into the trick. And as you said, thereby becoming the trickster in the trick. So what has to start and stop for us to get to this place of, of just, people sovereignty yeah people if people can if people can catch their manipulation of their of their emotions if people can catch that they're so here's an example i'm just very specific um here in the states uh, i I call this one too so the fbi is like not looking so good because of the capital riots it came out that you know donald trump did not incite the riots so fbi does not look good in that FBI does not look good in the Olympic um, athletes, the women gymnasts, because they knew about, they were warned 14, 14 months, many, many, many other girls were um, abused before they investigated it. They had mm-hmm. given the warnings. The FBI looks corrupt. So I happened to say, well, we need, uh, I said, well, now we need a missing girl. Sure enough, we got a missing girl, uh, Gabby Petito. She's all over the news. So let me just tell you, not the only missing girl that's gone missing mm. since the time she's gone missing. There's oh. thousands of people go missing mm. daily. Wow. But but this is a now it's a nas- nationwide manhunt and bring in the FBI because the FBI needs a good story. People I love and know are just devastated over this Gabby Petito missing story and they're so angry at the at the fiance and who you know who's hiding out and i have to say to people i said this is tragic and this is a parent's worst nightmare but don't be caught in the trick yeah i said fbi mm-hmm. needs a good story and it's just a good story and so if people can start to detach their mm-hmm. emotions to the story i know my weakness in, in media is anything to do with those animals when those afghanistan dogs were left behind. I mean, I could have puked my brains out. Mm-hmm. And I had to stop and say to myself, you don't actually know if it's real. It could be a picture. You could be, you know, it's like, it's just healthy detachment and discernment from what is being presented. And if people can get that and hold the space and still witness it, I'm not saying you even have to turn it off, but witness what is being presented with a healthy detachment and discernment we all won't be caught up so easily in this new, into the story. We, we feed the story because we, our pain gets like mm. caught up in it. Oh my God. You know, I can't even imagine if that were my daughter who was out with her fiance and he didn't come home. And, you know, we get, we, you know, we, we watch the news with our emotions the same way we allow a movie to move us. Mm. And we, we, we can't do it that way because that's Definitely. where the, that's but we're trained to i say i say football has led us to politics we're gonna we're gonna vote for our football teams our color football teams no matter what till Mm -hmm. death do us part we're part of that we're allegiant to our football teams we you know it doesn't matter if the players do wrong do drugs hurt animals cheat on their wives whatever we're gonna stick with our colors to the and that's what we how we do our politics we we can't separate or how we perceive reality from entertainment from, and from fantasy and entertainment. Absolutely. It's a, it's a big problem. Totally. And um, what I'm hearing you, Jackie, which, which is such an important message and so crucial for this time is watch, but question. And, 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 and here, here's the, the really interesting thing, because over the last 18 months, so much that I was hearing or seeing just did not make any sense to me. So I started digging and questioning and checking lots of different sources and references. And here's what I found, which was really fascinating. So something goes out. You don't even have to search. It's like two, three sources deeper and you it's in plain sight. What is that? It doesn't even take much to find. Okay, what's that? 
yeah, what I just heard, could, is there some, is that, is, is there anything more to it than, than, is that even any fact to that? Can I just quickly do one or two searches deeper and yeah. see if, where that came from? And oh my word, you, sometimes it's just one search and you realize it's all bullshit. Don't even spend any more energy or time on it. It's absolute crap. But people have got, um, they've kind of passed the responsibility on no more thinking. It's just like, okay, yeah. that's the it's news. Which is it. why it's easy to hijack their consciousness because totally, yeah, they pass the responsibility on. Yeah, you're absolutely right, and it doesn't take too much to to dig deep. And I, I you know, admire they, you for doing it, tricking us in plain sight. And, this, and we we allow we're allowing it, we are allowing it. Yeah. Jackie, you've got such an important role to play as you help your clients and the people that you you around you to to not be tricked. <laughs> not to be tricked um share a whiz bomb with us jackie you've written so many books and you, you know you you've just got so many amazing nuggets of gold so share some a powerful success insight that that would be meaningful for our audience Ooh, well i believe everybody is successful and deserves to be successful. So I, it's not just, you know, my success. It's, uh, I, and what, you know, it's so funny because the clients that are drawn to me at this point in my career are people who really just want to be of service to others. Mm -hmm. Now, before there was a previous time when I had, was, I had a lot of clients that just wanted to be famous <laughs> or, or were searching. Which is, yeah. Which is, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a different mm -hmm. motivation that they were more searching for the experience of the reflection of being popular or acknowledged. Um, but the, my best clients are the ones who are like, you know what, I have this collective volume of wisdom from my professional experience, and I want to share it with as many people as I can. Those are usually, those are my best clients. Those are my it's just because, because at that point, it's not about the self. It's not about, it's not about us, but you know, it, it takes a little, you have to have a little bit of ego to say, Hey, I've got, you know, something to share or take, or at least a little bit of balls, you know, it isn't always, <laughs> you know and, and people, you know, sometimes they're a little shy. They're like, but, 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 but we do, I mean, we almost, we almost have a responsibility at that point to share our wisdom. It could be personal story wisdom. I mean, personal stories and their life experience is just as valuable as professional wisdom. And whatever that calling is within to, that can help other people. I mean, because we all want looking to connect and we connect by story. Mm -hmm. And the narrative knows that because that's why they're feeding us the narrative. Mm -hmm. But you know, we we're, we're we're powerful enough to do this, excuse me, the exact same thing as well. Exactly. And, and your clients are matching your energy and your resonance right now where you've, you've moved into the space of, of meaning and impact and, and joyful experiences and, and, and creating um, the opportunities for people to bring their genius into the world through, through different medium. What's the change that you believe right now in our world would be the game changer for humanity? Uh, people catching the trick people catching that they're being manipulated into the trick by giving away their power. Yeah. And it's because, you know, we, we love the idea of the world taking care of us, you know, it's, you know, but there's, you know, we, we are the ones we've been waiting for. Right. And yeah. so um, I would love to, you know, I would, yeah. I, it's how it's how we need to be. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. that Jackie. It's um, we are the world. Why are we waiting for the world? Yeah. To help us, we are it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, which is why I'm enjoying being a stable girl <laughs> for an Arabian I, That is donkey. so cool. So cool. Yeah, I start my I start my day shoveling shit <laughs> and loving it. And loving it and loving it. It's heavy. I get sweaty and I got the rake and uh, yeah, <laughs> love it. You know, uh, and I'm serving to these magnificent animals. You know, um, uh, it's just like. So yeah, I've got some, I've got some friends who are making fun of me. They're like, who are you? That is <laughs> and I think amazing. Like people can change because I know I've changed. You know, I know that I've changed a lot and I know that I've grown a lot. 
Yeah, you've gone from this this overachiever glamour, glamour, everything glamour and what have you. You still yep. have that it to to great extent, but you're shoveling shit and you're happy. I mean, yep. maybe that's that's the next book or something. You know, shoveling <laughs> shit to be happy, and 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 maybe that's what we need. We need to sh- instead of talking shit, we need maybe to shovel it a little bit. <laughs> there you go, Carmen. That's genius. That's very good. That's very genius. Uh, Jackie, this has thank been so, so much fun. Uh, your spirit is just uh, incredible. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, to our Game Changer family, thank you for joining in and um, joining us in, in, in Jackie's amazing infectious bubbliness and spirit. And let's shovel some shit. Why not? There you Be go. happy. <laughs> thank you and, so much. Colin. And stop being tricked. So Go well, and until next time, lots and lots of love. Cheers.